you can only save the world once before it starts to get cliché. And this is one of the largest problems with stories in MMOs. Today in Game Thoughts, I'm going to be talking about why most MMO stories lose me. Where does it all go wrong? Because a lot of games start out pretty well. You're a random adventurer, or maybe you woke up and lost all of your memories. But hey, there's a farmer over there, and his chickens got out. I mean, you don't have anything better to do, so you might as well give him a hand. Sure, it's not too glamorous, but there's no need to be a dick, he's just doing his best to survive. And while you're helping him, some goblins attack. Well, it's either you or them, so you might as well kill them. Because we're in the world of MMOs, surely eventually this is going to lead into slaying wolves. But after you kill a particularly large wolf, you find out that wolf actually ate the king's third cousin. And now that you've slain it, you're invited to the royal castle, where you're immediately made a knight, a lord, offered to marry the princess someday, and all of a sudden, the stakes have entirely changed. This is my first problem with stories in most MMOs. Much like an episode of Dragon Ball Z, things escalate very quickly and then go absolutely nowhere. Your power level tends to start off very low, for a lot of different reasons. Maybe you're a god who was drained of all of their life essence. Maybe you have amnesia and you just don't remember the power that you had. Maybe you're just some random nameless nobody, a mercenary or adventurer of another sort. But somehow, very quickly, you'll end up talking to heads of state. You won't really be doing things for the local militia for very long. No, 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 those things are far too trivial for you, the refined MMO player. The power fantasy wouldn't be that interesting if you were just someone's errand boy even though many quests treat you exactly as that. Sure, you're going to be talking to the Archmage, but he wants you to walk up the stairs and give his apprentice a scroll. Then his apprentice asks you to walk down and give him confirmation. Afterwards, you find out he can just teleport the scrolls anyway, and it was a complete waste of your time. But yet, you're still in the room with the Archmage. And that's my problem. Too many games put you at too high of a level within the world far too quickly. Especially because, in most MMOs, your direct actions don't have that much of a consequence on the world. Even if you kill the king, he's probably just going to respawn. So maybe it would be better if you dealt with more mundane tasks, things that don't have giant world-changing impacts, since you're not actually changing the world. I find that when power escalates like this, the sense of stakes often get lost. It makes the entire world scale seem mundane. And by mundane, I mean in the same sense as when you're playing a game of civilization, wonders of a world are mundane. In real life, if you see a wonder of a world, it is a truly spectacular sight. You are in awe of a thing that is greater than you will ever be, because it's greater than any person can be. And yet, in civilization, there's something you build all the time. A thing that is glorious or impressive becomes mundane through repetition. And this brings me to my second big problem with MMO stories. They get very repetitive. Things go in cycles. You have to fight the ancient evil that will destroy the world. But then you kill the ancient evil and find out he was working for an elder god, an eldritch being with so much power that it's not going to destroy the world. It's going to destroy the entire universe. But you gather your friends, you gather the enemy factions, and you beat it. You burn it out of existence, only to find that after that, there's another Eldric horror lying in wait because the devs need another raid boss. Things are interesting and memorable not because they're epic, but because they're different experiences. The most memorable bosses to me from World of Warcraft weren't always the hardest fights. They weren't always the biggest story characters. They weren't even necessarily the most epic ones but they were the fights that had really unusual and unique mechanics. For example, in Siege of Orgrimmar, my most memorable fight was not Garrosh Hellscream. It was not the Great Big Bad or an iconic character from Warcraft lore. It was Thok the Bloodthirsty, because you were fighting a gigantic dinosaur, and if you didn't run away, he was going to go full Jurassic Park on your entire raid. This became memorable both because it was a gigantic dinosaur and because the fight felt very different from anything else I had done up to that point. Now, maybe in Classic or Burning Crusade, there was something that I missed. My raiding career started in Wrath of a Lich King. And yet the problem remains that Garrosh Hellscream should have been the epic centerpiece. 
And he wasn't, because I'd already fought the Lich King. And honestly, I don't think Blizzard ever managed to top the Lich King when it came to bad guys. Because it's hard to write a good villain. Writing a good villain means writing someone who is the hero of a story in their own eyes. Someone who's charismatic enough to convince you from the barest of moments that in fact, they're right. You agree with them, only to realize that their sensible points about how, I guess maybe we should use magic to better people's lives, then becomes, well, we should use magic to better people's lives by mass murdering a bunch of other people. A topic which at first glance seems sane even noble, now exposes the madness beneath, and now exposes the evil behind the hero. And then finally, there's the apocalypse. So many MMOs use the apocalyptic world-ending trope. And for good reason. Ending your series with an apocalyptic trilogy is a great way to go out with a bang. It's part of why Witcher 3 was so memorable. You experience Ragnarok, the end of a world, and during those trying times, your actions will determine the fate of all existence. But you can only really do that once. The second and third and fourth apocalyptic trilogies are boring. There's no sense of stakes if there's no sense of failure. Which is why I really like the fact that Square Enix opened Final Fantasy XIV with an apocalypse. It was the end of a world, and the heroes weren't able to save it. And Eorzea was reborn into what we know today. Unfortunately, I'm very behind on my Final Fantasy XIV lore. I haven't played since shortly after A Realm Reborn launched, though I've heard so many good things that at this point it's definitely on my list of games to go back to, whether it'll be during Endwalker or with a future expansion. I'd actually wanted to get into it when Endwalker launched. Unfortunately, you couldn't buy the game, and I lost my old account because it's been so long that I completely forgot the password and email associated with it. But enough of my rambling. What can developers do to make a good story in an MMO? Before I get into that, a quick reminder that if you're enjoying the video so far, or maybe this describes some of your frustrations with your favorite MMO story, leave a like and share it with a friend. For more content, such as all the recent gaming news, game reviews, and video essay thoughts on various topics, get subscribed and ring that bell to be notified whenever I upload. A special thanks to my patrons and channel members for their generous support and assistance in the creation of this video, but more about how you can help support at the end. For now, what can be done to make an MMO story more interesting? The first thing is, give your NPCs personality. While it's not really an MMO, the game Path of Exile does this pretty well. Many of the characters you interact with are, well, characters. You have Einhar, the eccentric master of beasts, who says things like, Don't worry, little beast, we are friends now, until we slaughter you. He's not necessarily the person I'd be trusting with any of my pets, that's for darn sure. Or if you experience heist content, you'll find the delightful rogue that is Vindari. He's the grandfather we always wanted, at least if your grandfather loved playing explosives and probably couldn't remember what he did five minutes ago which is an especially fun and dangerous combination, since he's probably handling explosives. Say what you will about the NPCs in Path of Exile and the fact that occasionally their voice lines do get repetitive or annoying, they are absolutely memorable. And the reason that the game's able to do this is it utilizes a relatively small cast. By keeping the world and the scope small, you're able to build meaningful interactions with NPCs. And the next part of this is make choices matter. Either make them permanent, your character chooses to side with a miner's guild. And if enough players side with a miner's guild, then maybe the alchemist guild is wiped out and the game permanently changes after that event. Or alternatively, make it a choice that you can undo. You could go side with the alchemist's guild, but you'll have to pay them a 5,000 gold fee since as part of helping the miners, you kind of stole a bunch of their reagents. And of course, the future quests that you get will come from the guild master that you associate yourself with. Another way to do this is add more content about mundane tasks for NPCs. In most MMOs, you don't know what guard number 5278 does. Except if he's in Falador, he probably has an incredibly short lifespan. One of the ways in which RuneScape excels, though, is many of the quests aren't for gods or major powers. I know as time has gone on, there has been a little bit more of that. But instead, there's quite a few where you just help someone with their everyday problems. And these quest chains aren't go kill five wolves, followed by go kill five blue wolves, and then get me three wolf ears. But don't worry, most wolves have zero ears, so you'll actually have to kill about 20 wolves. Instead, it's things like bring me a shrubbery. 
and you have to figure out what a shrubbery is, where to get it, who to get it from, or what to do. At times, it can be confusing, frustrating, and even maddening if you've ever done Plague's End. But it also helps you build a deeper connection with the world and the characters who reside within it. In modern RuneScape, the world is relatively large, but it wasn't always that way. And in comparison to a lot of other MMOs, it's actually expanded relatively slowly given its incredibly long runtime. Just think of how much Azeroth has gained, and then compare it to the map that you see in either Old School RuneScape or RuneScape 3. You'll realize that by square footage, it's a much smaller game. There's a much tighter experience, and you actually get to know a lot of the NPCs you're interacting with far more deeply. Another game that does this incredibly well is Star Wars The Old Republic. Because while you're leveling up, it doesn't feel like you're leveling in an MMO. Yes, a lot of the quests are the kill and collect quests that I mentioned earlier. However, you get a lot of story-based choices, which make me feel more like I'm playing Dragon Age, or another single-player experience, than playing an MMO. I get to decide if I'm going to be a lawful evil Sith that follows High Command, enforces order, and kills without compassion. Or maybe I'm going to be chaotic evil. I beat up my subordinates for fun, and if someone looks at me strangely in the bar, well, they're going to get a lightsaber between the eyes. Why? I don't know. My drink wasn't that great, and I could cut off a bartender's head, but this guy's given me a funny look twice, and he's an alien, and I don't really like aliens, because if you're going to be a chaotic evil Sith, why not add in a little casual xenophobia to your personality? And the game gives you all of these options. It gives you choices. The choices might not be quite as long-lasting as they would be in a single-player game, but they very accurately make you feel like your choices matter, like they're affecting the story as it progresses, even if in a lot of cases this isn't true in a significant gameplay-affecting way. Though, in the case of some companions, it will be. Your companions will react very differently depending on your alignment and some of the things you've done. They might be all for it. They might even fall in love. Or they could end up hating you for what you've become. So I think building personality, both in terms of a player character and the NPCs that they interact with, is incredibly important in MMOs, and this is often overlooked because the leveling process is treated not really as an experience, but as something to get through to reach the goal of endgame. A lot of the quests early on are tedious, so I understand the urge to rush to endgame, but I think with a better designed game, with a more engaging story, something that feels more like a single player experience, it would get more players to stop, relax a bit, and enjoy the journey which also gives the developer more room to add horizontal content. If you care about an NPC's storyline, you're probably going to do the quest, even if it doesn't give you a super epic sword. Now, maybe some people will just go for the things that give a super epic sword, but a lot of others won't. And this means there's more ways to engage the game without just making numbers bigger or making things better. And finally, please don't overuse saving the world. Don't overuse that you are the chosen hero, the only one that can stop this ancient evil. Because at the end of the day, you can only save the world once before it gets cliche. But what do you think? Are MMO stories fine? Do you not really care and just want to mash buttons and collect shiny loot? Or would you like to see more that are a little bit slower paced, but structured more like a single player experience, where it's immersive and impactful, and you can enjoy your journey to max level without feeling like you're missing out? Let me know some of your thoughts down in the comments below. A special thanks to my patrons and YouTube channel members. Your support helps keep me independent and allows me to turn down things like sketchy mobile game sponsorships. You can do so for as low as $1 a month over on Patreon. Or if you want to support me completely for free, then you can join the community by hopping into my Discord, link below. Or of course, you can just click the suggested video in the card right now. I hope you learned something today, and maybe I'll see you again sometime soon.